Hi everyone, welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm broadcasting this IELTS lesson from Budapest near the Danube River. Uh, just give me a second, I'll bring up our video feed here and uh, we'll get going with the class. Here we go. Oh. What's going on with that video? Just a moment, students, fear not. I'm on the case here. Uh -huh. Okay. There we are. Now you'll see me. Alrighty, let's do this again. All right, students. Welcome, welcome. A little bit of a technical issue there, but figure that one out pretty quick. All right, hi Hussein, hi Begzad, hi Eunice. Again, my name is Adrian. I'm broadcasting to you live from Budapest. All right, our materials come from our websites, uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. Six full practice exams, a fully interactive course, over 100 videos, I think now, not just over 100 hours of videos. Uh, GIELTSHelp.com for general IELTS. Check us out there if you're doing the general IELTS test. Um, I see a student asking uh, somebody if they're doing the paper-based or uh, computer-based, which is a newer uh, version of IELTS. Our websites, by the way, students are really great for the computer-based uh, IELTS exam because they're very, very similar to the computer-based IELTS exam. You can do uh, interactive exams just like the computer-based test. So if you go to uh, this website here, this is our academic IELTS, click that big red button, you can join in and you get six full interactive practice exams that are very, very similar uh, to the computer-based IELTS that you're going to experience and they're timed exams. Uh, you can use them on uh, your phone or your tablet. For general IELTS, go for this green background, click on that big red button, okay, there, so. All right, students, uh, getting back on target here. Uh, if you're looking for our books, you can search Amazon for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS. If you have questions about IELTS or our products, I-E-L-T-S, uh, you can email me, adrian at aehelp.com, okay? Good to see you again, Kyber, in this class. You're very studious. That's great. All right. Uh, so a little bit about our schedule today, speaking part one and two. We're going to focus a lot on two. Tomorrow, we'll do a task two essay, to what extent do you agree? Then we'll do some reading strategy and then a members chat. Uh, so members, we got a few new members, that's great to see. Uh, request a class for us. So send me a question for uh, reading or writing or speaking and I'll be glad to schedule that class. These classes are uh, 15 to 16 o'clock, Wednesday to Saturday. All right, uh, there's our schedule for next week. And now we'll warm up with some speaking. So uh, I know a lot of students have speaking exams coming up. Uh, you will uh, go to your interview one hour before your scheduled time, okay? So arrive an hour early. Uh, take some questions with you, like the ones you see today, on paper, okay? Not on your phone, just on a piece of paper. Don't depend completely on your phone. Uh, take a piece of paper with questions, put it in your pocket, find another student and practice before you go into the interview room. That will help you get at least a half band more. The brain takes time to warm up, just like running, just like exercise, uh, just like a car engine, you have to warm up your speaking, okay? Don't go into the IELTS interview cold. That's a bad idea, okay? It's like running your car cold. It's a bad idea, all right? So go early. 
Then you go into the uh, exam room. You feel great, confident. You've practiced. You know what to expect. Uh, and you're ready to go. So the examiner will say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. It has three parts. I will give you instructions for each part. May I see your passport or identification, please? Hi, students joining in. Nice to see so many of you. What do you say? So, uh, what is your full name? Answer that for me. Uh, I see that uh, there are many ways to answer this question, and a lot of you have learned from me uh, some great ways and from other students some great ways to answer this question. So use it. Okay. So what is a way to answer this question? What is your name? I'll answer it. You answer it, and then we'll move on. Show your fluency, show your confidence. The reason you want to answer this nice uh, and complete uh, is because it helps your confidence. It makes you feel good about it. So uh, Charmin says, my full name is Charmin Sultana. Please call me by my first name, Charmin. Okay, it's a nice name, Charmin. Charmin Sultana, some nice S's, S sounds. Nice flowing name, Charmin. So I picked that one out. It's a good answer. My full name is Charmin Sultana. Please call me by my first name, Charmin. Okay, um, given name if, uh, if you're using British English. Okay, good. Uh, they will ask you, what should I call you? So you might as well just include that into your answer, okay? Uh, and they're looking at your passport to match it with their uh, registration. So make sure you say your full name. Okay. Some good answers there. Uh, Labdeep says, uh, my full name is Labdeep Kaur Sidhu. You can call me by my first name, Labdeep. Okay. Great. Fantastic. All right. Uh, and then uh, they will ask you some more questions on a general topic to get to know you better. Uh, so the next question is, what do you like to do when the weather is nice? Okay, give me an, an answer for this. Hopefully we have some questions of some students from our previous class in here as well. So what do you like to do when the weather is nice? Okay, what do you like to do when the weather is nice? Give me a full sentence answer. Of course, you should include your reason. It only makes sense. Okay, Timur says, I like running. Uh, Timur, it's a good start. Uh, it's too simple. Even if you have great English, for the IELTS, it's too simple. It's uh, hard for the examiner to figure out your English level if you give just uh, subject, verb, object type responses. So uh, you have to give a little bit more. I like running because, why do you like running? when the weather's nice, Timur. Uh, it's funny, Timur, but I actually like running in the rain. I also like running. I like running in the rain because I find it's refreshing and it keeps me cool. So I actually enjoy running in bad weather. Uh, all right, let's see what else we have there. I like walking outside if the weather is good because it fills me with energy. Hussein Hassan, when the weather is nice, I go for a bike ride uh, in the nearby countryside and I can go all day clocking over 50 kilometers by the end of it. Uh, Hussein, sure, I twisted that a little bit, but it looks good. Harminder, welcome aboard. You're one of the new members. I uh, saw your email and I believe I replied to it. If not, don't worry, I'll get to it. Uh, Harminder says, uh, I like to go for shopping and chatting with friends. Okay, Harminder, uh, be careful uh, with that answer. Uh, shopping is kind of an indoor activity. So if I ask you, what do you like to do when the weather is nice? If you say, I like to go for shopping, you should explain why 
because I might be confused as your listener that really you like to be inside of a shop when the weather is nice outside. So Harminder, careful. It's an awkward answer, but you might say something like, I like to go shopping, not necessarily in the store, but window shopping. So I don't get rained on because I'm just outside looking through the display window. Okay, That would make sense. Or if you do your shopping at an open market uh, where you're not protected uh, by a roof. Okay. So uh, Shubham Gupta says, I like to eat fast food, especially fried food when the weather is nice because the best fried food uh, fried food is street food and street vendors are of course outside without any shelter. So Shubham Gupta, again, same idea. Give me some clear information of why you like to go and eat food when the weather is nice. Okay. Uh, otherwise it's awkward. It's weird if somebody likes to be inside. Okay. Sevkan says, can I speak a little bit slower? Sevkan, yep, I can slow myself a little bit. If others feel that I'm talking too fast, just let me know, okay? I don't want you to uh, be lost. So Rekha says, last week uh, it was raining and I enjoyed the moment. I made memos for the whole family. Uh, Rekha, we're not on bad weather yet. Okay, here's my answer. Um, when it's sunny out, I like to go for a picnic in the park with my family, like last uh, weekend uh, we spent, it was 30 degrees out and we spent a great time at Beacon Hill Park, uh, eating food that my wife prepared and playing games with my children. All right, and again, careful not to talk too much because the examiner will interrupt you. So it needs to sound like there is an end to what you're saying. Uh, right away, uh, complex language, subordinating conjunction, when, using condition. When it's sunny out, I like to go for a picnic in the park with my family. Like last weekend, it was 30 degrees out and we spent a great time at Beacon Hill Park eating food that my wife prepared and playing games with my children. Uh, notice the quantitative language, the connection, the smooth flowing example. That will work. Jason G, good to see you in class, okay? So uh, again, uh, paraphrase, nice weather. What is nice weather? Well, it makes sense to say sunny outside. You don't have to come up with a really unique, strange answer, okay? It's absolutely okay to say a cliche idea like picnic in the park as long as you use a complex sentence, all right? Students get confused by thinking that they need to be really unique in IELTS to get a high band score. It's not true, okay? If you need a band seven, you can say common everyday information. You just need to say it clearly and using complex grammar. Using complex grammar and using unique ideas is not the same. Careful, okay? All right, uh, next question. How about when the weather is bad? Okay, so first question was, what do you like to do when the weather is nice? Okay, students, make sure you repeat me nice and loud. So this is speaking. Repeat my pronunciation. Repeat my intonation. Uh, I'm using West Coast North American English, so it's a very clear form of English. So repeat me. What do you like to do when the weather is nice? The questions are in the stream description also. Uh, and, uh, the next question here, still part one. How about when the weather is bad? Wafa Wafa, uh, says, uh, if the weather is bad, I would stay at home reading books or cooking something that is sweet 
to change my mood about the weather. Wafa, that is really good. Okay, that's nice. It's a nice answer. It's visual. All right. Rahul, good luck on your speaking tomorrow. Pick up some tips from this class. I'm sure you'll do great. Okay, Binod. Uh, let's see what you had there. So Binod says, when the weather isn't favorable, I will watch, uh, I will love to watch a movie inside uh, as it's quite entertaining for me and makes me feel relaxed. Uh, refreshed is a bit weird for move to say for a movie, Binod. I would say relaxed or entertained, but you already used the word entertaining, so you don't want to repeat that. Okay, but good, otherwise good. Uh, Begzod says, I usually stay home on stormy days and cold days. Yesterday there was such dark clouds in the sky, therefore I didn't go out uh, but watched some of my favorite animes instead. It's okay, uh, Begzod, to use the word animes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> If the weather is poor, such as really cold or rainy, then I like to stay in and watch a good movie or curl up with a mystery novel as I did last Sunday when it was raining cats and dogs okay that's an idiom for you uh, anybody know the uh, proper way to say raining cats and dogs Hi, Kesey. Good to see you in class. Kesey says, when the weather is not too good, I just stay at home reading some books. Like yesterday, it was rainy. I read uh, Eat, Pray, Love uh, for three chapters. Kesey, nice answer. Very visual, very simple to understand. You'll get a great score for that. Okay. Uh, just give me one second. Okay. All right. So... Uh, some good answers coming up there. Great. Uh, raining cats and dogs is an idiom which means a downpour. Okay. A downpour or a storm is called uh, raining cats and dogs. Yeah, downpour. Okay. That's good. All right. So some good answers there. Again, remember to repeat when I say questions and answers. Let's do this one one more time. How about when the weather is bad? If the weather is poor, such as, a really such as really cold or rainy, then I like to stay in and watch a good movie or curl up with a mystery novel, as I did last Sunday when it was raining cats and dogs. Uh, students, only use idioms if you are 110% sure you're using it correctly. It's okay to practice idioms for your speaking uh, before the IELTS when you're getting ready, but during the official IELTS, during your real IELTS exam, only use idioms if you're 110% sure you use it correctly. Otherwise, they will make your mark go down fast because they are very incoherent, okay? So careful with that. Okay, students, so we'll get into a couple more part one questions and then focus mainly on uh, part two uh, for this class. Before we do that, I want to give you a little bit of strategy that will help you to think of good answers quickly, okay? So the goal of my strategy here, or of this strategy, it's not necessarily my strategy, is to help you think of good answers quickly okay and um, more particularly we're focusing here on sources of knowledge for information and you can use this for explanations and examples in all of your speaking and you can use it in your writing as well so you're writing task one and two uh, this will help you come up with ideas with good ideas uh, and give effective communication. Okay. So, uh, sources of knowledge. 
uh, students. Let's talk about this for a minute before we go on to some more speaking questions in part two. Uh, we have information in our brains, hopefully, uh, and uh, we get that information, we get our ideas from basically four places or four different groups or categories, okay? And I'm not thinking books here, so it's not, the, not books, it's not the internet. Uh, where do we get our information from or where do we get our truths from? This is another way to think of it. Where do we get ideas we believe to be true from? So where do we get our truths from? Think about this question. Where do we get our truths from in our world, in our life? Okay. Juan Pablo, very good. Uh, Kimira says our experiences, our experiences. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And like I said, not necessarily from the internet. So we get our, uh, our truths from our experiences. Now, experiences, we're going to say it There we go. Empirical, empirical. Uh, they're called empirical truths. So I'll get the spelling here in a second. There we go. Uh, we get it from empirical evidence, which means that we see it to be true, so we believe it to be true. That's one of our truths, okay? Um, so that includes failures, uh, Pankaj and... Uh, Gujar and includes our practice. So uh, we see it to be true. So we believe it. Okay, this is the foundation for research and science. I'll give you an example. I believe there is gravity because I throw a ball in the air. and I see it land on the ground. Okay, so that's an example of an empirical truth. Okay, an empirical truth is you see it to be true, so you believe it to be true. In a sense, it's your real life visual sensory experience or information, okay? Uh, so empirical, what's another way that we believe something to be true? So what's another way that we believe information to be true that we can use after that to uh, give an explanation or an example or detail, okay? Not necessarily from our faults, okay? Uh, our knowledge uh, is, our evidence is this empirical truth. Okay, uh, how about, uh, I'll give you an example and you can tell me. So if I cough, if I'm like, <coughs> And uh, somebody who is an electrical engineer says, uh, Hi, Adrian, I think you have uh, pneumonia in your left lung. You really need to get that checked out and take this antibiotic. And I'm like, uh, really? And then another person who's a doctor, right, a physical doctor, a uh, physician, says, uh, Adrian, I think you have uh, a bad flu and you need to take this medication. Uh, I'll probably believe the doctor. Why? So why? Uh, Samita has a good answer. So Samita says it's an expert or it's a professional's opinion. Yeah, absolutely. So the other way that this is said is authority opinion. So the expert says it's true. So I believe it. Okay, uh, for example, I had a bad cough. Uh, the doctor said it was just an allergy. So I believed him. Okay, so that's authority opinion. So you believe 
that truth because the expert tells you that that's the way it is. And you, so you believe that, okay? Um, so that's your authority opinion. Again, students, uh, don't get lost here. This is very valuable information for you because you can think about this when you're trying to think of explanations and examples for your speaking or for your task to uh, essay writing. And if you're stuck, you can think, okay, wait a second. Adrian said I can use something from my experience, so empirical, something that I've seen to be true, something that an expert told me was true, or these other two. Uh, which are the other two? Uh, can anybody guess the third one? Maybe I'll give you a little bit of help here. Imagine that somebody comes into the uh, studio here and says, Adrian, uh, let's go outside because a UFO just landed and there are green Martians who have come in peace and they want to give you uh, a present from Mars. And I'm kind of like, hmm, okay. Uh, Sajad, you're kind of close. Um, and so I'm kind of like, ah, I don't know about that. But then two more people come into the uh, studio and say, Adrian, there are aliens outside who really want to give you a present. I know it's strange, but... And then uh, suddenly there's like a thousand people in front of my window and say, uh, Adrian, there are aliens waiting for you to come outside. They want to give you a present. And eventually when there's hundreds, there's thousands of people telling me the same information then I think maybe it's true. Uh, so Sajad says, common things in society. Yeah, yeah, you're now on the right track. It's called majority opinion. Okay, so when everybody says it's true, It probably is. Okay. So many of my friends told me in 2015 to invest into Bitcoin. So I did. And boy, am I happy. Okay. So that would be my example, all right? Everybody says it's true, so I believe it to be true. Everybody says it's a beautiful place to go visit, so I want to go visit there, even though I've never been, all right? It's majority opinion. The last one, the fourth type, I'll just give that one to you. We want to get back to speaking here. It's called intuition. I feel it to be true. So it probably is. I fell in love with this girl sitting next to me in math class. It must be love because I can feel it in my heart. Okay, nobody told you, the doctor didn't tell you. Um, there aren't 100 people running around saying, yeah, you're probably in love with that person. Uh, but you're feeling it, right? You're feeling uh, something to be true, so you believe it. Sometimes we have that, it's called a gut feeling, okay? As well, it's often referred to as your gut feeling. Like you feel like it's dangerous to go some direction, so you decide to go a different direction. Okay. All right. So something interesting here, students. Again, follow with me. Repeat after me. Okay. Uh, empirical truth, authority opinion, majority opinion, intuition. Okay. All of your truths, all of the information that you have collected in your life and that you believe to be true is uh, in one of these four categories, okay? It belongs to one of these four groups. Uh, I'm giving you strategies for IELTS, specifically right now for speaking and for writing, and you believe that this will work because you believe that I'm the expert and I know what I'm talking about. Hopefully it's true, right? 
Now, when you're in your speaking exam and when you're in your task two and you get stuck for ideas, you can come up with a good idea by quickly thinking of these four truths. So you can think of empirical. Have I seen research studies or have I seen it happen somewhere in real life in front of me? Have people told me that it's true? Has the expert told me that it's true? Or do I just feel it to be true? And give that piece of information. Okay. Um, yes, you can learn these, Ashish, in university. Absolutely. A good university professor will teach you about these as well. That's where I learned it. So this is the most valuable when you see it to be true. This is the second most valuable when the expert tells you. The third and the least is your intuition. Now, I know some people will argue and say, oh, my feelings are always right. When I feel that lucky horse will win, it always wins. But statistics show that that's usually not the case. Okay. Uh, so number one is the most valuable. Number two, authority opinion is the second. Number three is less. And number four, intuition is the least valuable. All right, let's get back to our speaking and apply this to some questions. Uh, let's apply it to one or two uh, answers here. Let's start with this one. How often do you exercise? Okay, so follow with me. Again, students, back to speaking, nice and loud. How often... Do you exercise? Give me an answer here where you're using one of these four sources of knowledge or sources of truths to help you give some support. Okay? I will do the same and you try the same. Okay? So use one of these four. Try to switch them up. Try to mix them. Use different ones for different questions. Okay? It will make your responses more interesting. So Sevgi says, since I'm an inactive person, I don't usually train on a regular basis, just basic morning exercises two or three times a week, but I'm trying to motivate myself to do exercise regularly. All right, you're not using too many truths there to support. Uh, here, I'll show you an example of what I mean. I exercise at least four times uh, a week. I especially focus on doing 30 minutes of sustained cardiovascular uh, workout because doctors say that this will add at least 10 extra years to my life. Boom. There it is. What am I using? Okay. Let me know. Let's see how you did. Okay. Ashish says, uh, we can take an example from authority opinion as prescribed by a doctor. Ashish, perfect. Uh, you're absolutely in line with what I just put up there. Uh, Wafa Wafa says, health is better than wealth. I don't like to be a couch potato, so I act actually practice sports. Playing volleyball is second nature for me. Okay, good answer, Wafa Wafa, but you're not using the sources of knowledge to back up your opinion. That's what I'm looking for here, is use your sources of knowledge to give powerful answers. Okay, that's right, Joshua. I'm using authority opinion. Okay. Keep trying, students. I want to see a couple good ones. Begzad says, I always spend one to two hours on uh, e evenings and weekdays for workouts, such as jogging or lifting weights. Additionally, uh, I, private doctor, MR James, also recommend, my private doctor, Mr. James, also recommended me to do so as it improves uh, my back pain. Absolutely, Begzad. Good. So there you're using one of these. Absolutely good. Good, good for you. Roshni says, I work out twice a day in the morning, evenings, one hour since it keeps me in shape, but the authorities say it's also good to do exercise daily. Yeah, Roshni, don't say authorities, uh, say the authority. So in this case, a doctor or personal trainer, right? So who is the authority on exercise? Personal trainers, kinesiologists, doctors, use that vocabulary. Your score will go up and up and up. 
All right. Uh, there's other ways you could do this, students. So don't just uh, authority opinion is the first one that comes to mind. But you could say all my friends tell me that working out two or three times a day is good. Uh, it's fine, Big Zod. Don't worry about it. All right. Let's see. Any other ones coming? I don't see any more. Let's try the next one, students. Okay. Again, remember the goal in these answers for the rest of today's exercise, we are focusing on adapting our sources of knowledge, empirical, authority, majority, and intuition. It's okay. In your speaking, you can use intuition. I feel much healthier since I've been doing exercise three or four times a week. All right. So lots of good ways to do it. Yeah, Joshua, good one. So I work out every morning. I read a research article which affirmed that stretching in the morning is a great way to start the day. Beautiful, Joshua. Good for you. Throwing out answers like that, you're well on your way to a band seven or an eight, at least. Okay, good for you. That's research article. You're close to empirical evidence with that one. All right, let's go to the next question, students. What do you eat to be healthy? Okay, what do you eat to be healthy? Let's see some answers. Again, use one of those four sources of knowledge. So empirical evidence, you see it to be true, so you believe it. Okay, number two, authority, some expert told you. Three, opinion, everybody tells you or intuition, you feel it, okay? Give me some nice answers with what do you eat to be healthy, okay? Use these to boost the quality of your answers, all right? I'll do the same. So, I eat eggs and bacon every morning, but no carbohydrates as I not only read this is uh, a good way to start the day but since I've been doing this for the last three months I've lost around 10 kilograms all right so there's my answer uh let's see what you put up there okay and then we'll go through my answers so lenny prince says usually i have more vegetables my family doctor recommends me to eat more healthy foods like eggs and veggies yeah lenny good so you stuck with the authority opinion that works okay um Let's see. Uh, Joker says, to be honest, I do not like to eat salad uh, and vegetables, but because of my high weight, my doctor told me to eat eggs and many other food, which are good for my health. Joker, don't use the word things in your answer, okay? Avoid the word things. Things is not good. Things has no value, all right? So avoid things. Don't use that. Uh, Violetta Castro says, I've started to eat a lot of salads because they make me feel healthy. And the nutritionist told me I need to lose weight. Yeah. Nutritionist is the expert. Check out my answer students. And then I'll look at some more of yours. So I eat eggs and bacon every morning, but no carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are like bread, pasta, um, rice. As I not only read this is a good way to start the day, but since I've been doing this for the last three months, I've lost around 10 kilograms. Uh, what is this part of my sentence? Which source of knowledge is this? Since I've been doing this, look at the beautiful grammar it's forcing me to use with the uh, uh, present perfect. Uh, which... Uh, part of uh, my source of knowledge or which of the four sources of knowledge am I using here? But since I've been doing this for the last three months, I've lost around 10 kilograms. What am I using there? Empirical evidence, authority opinion, majority, or intuition? 
Hussein Hassan says experience. I saw a couple other answers in there as well. Uh, Hussein Hassan says it's empirical evidence. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I see it to be. It's not intuition. Okay, I've been doing this, so it's done. Uh, so I'm doing this for the last three months. I'm not eating carbohydrates. So it is my experience. I see it to be true, so I believe it, right? I actually see myself losing weight. So when I'm eating uh, protein for breakfast and not eating carbohydrates, I literally experience and see myself losing weight. And here is an interesting fact, ladies and gents. It's not a word of a lie. Look at my videos on this channel from three months before, and you'll see I have a much pudgier face and a bigger body. I, it's actually the truth. I've been cutting out carbohydrates for the last uh, three months. I also increased my exercise, and I lost about 10 kilograms. So that's empirical evidence, okay? It's not to blow my own horn. I'm not bragging here, but just an example of empirical evidence, okay? So use it. Again, the trick is use different ones for different questions, okay? So use different ones for different questions, all right? So try to use authority opinion in one question. Try to use empirical evidence in another question. Try to use uh, majority opinion for another question. So here, uh, let's do that again. Okay, let's do one more. Where is a place you visit for health? Okay, where is a place you visit for health? Okay, Kesey says, I'm a vegetarian because my sister told me when she started to eat vegetables daily, she felt much lighter and energized. So I've been doing this and I too feel healthier and stronger. Good Kesey. So some good empirical evidence in there as well. And some authority opinion because you feel that your sister is an authority on the topic, right? Uh, Timur says, Jim. All right. It's a good answer, Timur, but you need to give me more. All right. Um, Wafa Wafa says, McDonald's is a famous restaurant that presents safe and healthy food. I don't know about that, Wafa. I don't know if I agree with you, but that's okay. I don't have to agree with you as long as you can explain yourself clearly, okay? I didn't do it, says. I usually eat muesli, um, which is uh, porridge. It's, it's a type of porridge. So I usually eat porridge with some yogurt in the mornings. I think it's a stable breakfast, and according to studies, porridge or oatmeal is keeps me health keeps me healthy with my digestive system. Don't use you. I didn't do it. Use uh, I. Okay. And you're thinking instead of muesli, use porridge. Porridge is more English than muesli. All right. Uh, but it was a good answer. Uh, girls and guys, we're on to this question now. Where is a place you visit for health? Where is a place you visit for health? Okay. And uh, I'm glad that I see some of you are really getting the hang of this sources of knowledge now. Yeah. So Timur says, for health, I prefer to visit my local swimming pool. And there's a little swimming pool emoji. Uh, which is great. Now, use one of those sources of knowledge, all right? Why do you like to visit the swimming pool, okay? So here we go. Uh, I'm going to give an answer. Give me some answers as well. Try to use different sources of knowledge for different answers.
There's my answer. Okay, it makes you think. It makes the uh, cogs and wheels of your brain turn when you have to think of different sources of knowledge. And it's very effective to boost your score. You're really giving a range of ideas to the examiner. Okay. Um, so Labadeep says, there are a plethora of places for keeping my body healthy, including playgrounds and good restaurants, but I mostly prefer playing football. All right, but you're not really using the sources of knowledge, so your answer stayed quite simple, Labadeep. Uh, Jason G says, there's a public gym hall near my house, and it's for free, thus I prefer to do my daily activities there to keep myself healthy. Jason, it's okay, but again... Um, give me something more. Like, uh, I feel that this is a great way to get a workout while saving time. So at least use intuition to stretch your answer, make it more natural and complex. Okay. Begzod says, I work out at a fitness club every other day, not only because it's quite near to my home, uh, and it usually takes 10 minutes to go back there, but also there's a lot of new equipment to use. I heard about it from my friends a couple months back, and I'm really glad they told me about it, okay? Um, so here is my answer. Have a look. Since many of my friends have been raving about this new climbing wall in Victoria, I went the other day to check it out, and boy, did I ever work up a sweat in less than an hour. I'm sure this is a great way to improve my overall fitness, Okay. Using majority opinion, so all, since many of my friends have been raving about this, raving about this means they've been saying a lot of good uh, information about that place, okay? So here I'm using majority opinion, okay? So notice my answers. Again, for the first question, my answer focuses on authority opinion, okay? So... Uh, doctors say that 30 minutes of cardiovascular workout daily uh, increases uh, lifespan, adds 10 years. So authority opinion. Next one, what do I eat to stay healthy? I eat eggs and bacon, no carbohydrates. I've done this for three months and I've lost 10 kilos. I feel great. Empirical evidence. I experience it to be true. So it has to be true. It's my truth. Okay. Um, and, uh, the next one is, uh, where's a place that I visit for health? Well, I visit this climbing wall. Why? Because all my friends have been telling me that it's a great place to get a good workout. So majority opinion. Okay. Practice switching up these four sources of knowledge for the questions and answers in your part one and part three, and you'll get a really nice range of vocabulary, information, and ideas developing in your interview. And absolutely, that will help to bump up your uh, speaking score, okay? Same with your task two, okay? Same with your task two, all right? So keep that in mind. Okay, uh, let me show you how we can use this in part two a little bit, all right? So uh, let's have a look at part two. Here it is. Okay. Is that clear? I, I just want to make sure I'm not losing everybody here. A am I clear? Does everybody understand what I mean by four sources of knowledge, empirical, uh, authority, majority, intuitive or intuition, and how we can use that to express ourselves and expand what we're saying and how we're saying it? Does that make sense? To, are you picking up what I'm putting down? to be a little bit idiomatic here. Okay, great. So getting some good feedback there. All right, great. And practice that, okay? Practice that. All right, uh, let's have a look at part two and um, talk about that a little bit. So here's our part two card. You finished part one. Uh, part two, the talk, not task, talk about a talented uh, classmate or coworker. Okay, so talk about a talented cl classmate or coworker. Who is the person and how do you know them? What does this person look like? Why is this person talented? What could they do to maximize using their talent? So here we're talking about a person. We're talking about what they look like. 
personality, and of course their actions. Okay, I'm very happy that you're you're figuring out what I'm telling you. Good. All right. So I'm not going to get into a full answer here, but in your one minute planning time, so you have that one minute, right? You can remember this strategy. So you can remember this uh, empirical authority, majority, intuition, and apply it to the topic, okay? To talk really nicely in the two minutes without repeating yourself too much, okay? Check this out, all right? You'll, you'll, you'll see the value of what I'm giving you this class when you see how you can use it in part two. So, talented person. I don't know why my spell check is messing with that, but anyway. Um, okay, so let me show you an example here. Okay. So let's say that I have a classmate who's really talented, okay? Um, and uh, let's say that um, they're really talented in singing, okay? I'm just going to come up with a real quick example here. So follow with me here, students. So what would be an example? So I just want you to answer my questions here. What would be an example of um, uh, empirical evidence that I have a classmate who is talented at singing? So what would be empirical evidence that I have a classmate who is talented at singing? What could I say in the two minutes? What could I see, say in this two minutes that... The examiner says, okay, that was there. Of course, they'll just think it or feel it. They won't actually say it. But uh, hi, Sahil. So what could they say? So they won a contest. I saw them won it, win a contest. Uh, Seiston, that's okay. Something more direct. Yeah, Eunice says, I've heard them singing many times, and I can. I just feel that they're amazing, right? So... Uh, every time, jeez, my typing today. Every time I hear her sing, my heart melts and I'm cast away into a dream-like state. Okay, so that's your empirical because it's your opinion, right? You need to experience it. So you think, wow, this person's amazing. Every time I hear her sing, my heart melts and I'm cast away into a dream-like state, okay? So that would be empirical, yeah, because you hear, you see, but in this case, you hear the person sing and they seem amazing, right? So you're like, wow, they're amazing. Okay, uh, what would be uh, an authority opinion? So what would be something that you could include in your two-minute speech to show that it's not just you, it's not just the way you experience her singing, but the authority also agrees with you. So who would be an authority in this case? Okay, Masood, you're going for the majority, so make sure you can separate these, yeah? Okay, so Eigel says she has won many awards. That could be majority and it could be authority, right? Samita is judges. By the way, uh, some of you might be thinking right now, hey, wait a second, so 
um, America's Got Talent or India's Got Talent, they're combining authority opinion, the three judges, with the majority opinion, which is the group, right? And they don't always agree. That's interesting. All right. Um, so authority would be a judge or a music teacher, right? So my music teacher says that she has the best voice of any student that has been in her class for the past 20 years. Okay, so that would be the music teacher. My music teacher says that she has the best voice of any student that has been in the class for the past 20 years. Okay. Majority opinion. What would be an example of a majority opinion? I bet you're going to have an easy time with this one. So you'll be like, oh, yeah, of course, right? Uh, that's right. Everybody admires her songs. Yeah, that's right. So uh, whenever... She starts singing in front of the school. Everybody claps and cheers for her. Uh, and then you can keep going. In fact, she just won the um, Brazil's Got Talent uh, Juniors competition last year. So then you can really figure it out, okay? Uh, again, you see where I'm going with this. So you have this cue card. You need to talk for two minutes. You need to talk about a talented classmate. Don't get stuck. Don't just keep talking about, oh, I think her voice is amazing every time I hear her sing. She's so wonderful. I love the way uh, that she sings. Her voice is so pretty. Uh, don't just get stuck in this very redundant kind of cyclical reasoning and explanation, but remember this class and go, oh, yeah, I can use authority opinion, majority opinion. So uh, my music teacher uh, has awarded her uh, best vocal singer in the school for the past 10 years. So you can think about these other sources of information to make your part two a lot more complete, a lot more robust, okay? Does everybody understand how that works? Is that clear? So is it clear how you can uh, use these four sources of knowledge to give a better part to response and how you need to think about this in the one minute uh, note taking time? Is that clear? Is everybody with me? Am I, are you still on the same page? Doom Fate says, yes, yes, it's very clear. Okay, good. All right, so remember your sources of knowledge. All right, students, that's it for me for today. So here's your challenge. Uh, look at this cue card, plan your response, give a full two-minute response, use the different sources of knowledge, the different truths, okay? Uh, give me a quality response, record it on your phone, Send it to me by email, mp3 format. Uh, my email is, again, adrian at aehelp.com. I will let you know if you're doing a good job. Try to connect among those ideas in your part two, of course. And again, students, for lots of fantastic strategies, you can find this strategy on our website also if you go through our full course. For academic IELTS, go to this website with the blue background, uh, click this big red button. It's aehelp.com. And uh, for uh, general IELTS, go to this website with the green background. Click that big red button and join that full course. Do yourself a favor. Uh, learn the right strategies. Learn powerful strategies that will really help you to increase band scores. And you won't have to do the IELTS again and again and again. Uh, you're very welcome, everybody. I'm glad that you uh, got some good value from this class. I will see you tomorrow uh, the same time, okay? Uh, we'll pick it up from here. Much love to all of you. Bye for now. Have a great rest of your day.